So we're recording now. Um, thank you everybody for coming to this. This is really cool. It's good to like see all these 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 faces. Um, so I um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about what sort of the goal of this project is, and then um, we're going to go into training. So that's going to be um, I'm going to talk about sort of just the um, the nuts and bolts of using your phone or Zoom to record, since that many people that's the only thing they have access to, um, and then. Uh, Kat Meow with Open Signal, thank you for joining us. Um, she is going to um, she's going to talk a little bit about how do we how do we film at a protest. And it looks like Rayani just joined us. Thanks for joining us, Rayani. Oh, that was good. <laughs> Sweet. Thanks for coming. Hey, Rayani, are you cool with us recording this for cable channels, YouTube, social media? Yeah, go for it. Okay, I'm just breaking down sort of the lineup of what's going to happen today. So Kat Meow is going to talk about how do we document protests. And then um, J. Lou is going to talk a little bit about um, sort of some advice for how do we talk about racial inequity. OK? OK, so um, I'm going to start. I think some people, they asked me, well, I, I, I've called quite a few people or texted them. And they said, well, what, what, what could I make? Well, what is something that's an example of something I could make? So I'm going to do a quick screen share. I'm just going to show like a few examples that I think are attainable. Some of them are made with like more professional gear, but the goal of this is is not necessarily to have, you know, something that's super well lit and filmed in a, like a full frame sensor, blah, blah, blah. It's about getting your voice out there using the tools that you have. So I'm going to do a screen share. You guys can see my my calendar there. Does, can everybody see that calendar screen? Yes. Okay. Oops, sorry. Can people hear that? Let me make sure, share computer sound, there we go. Um, so I'm gonna just start with a really simple format, which is if you used Zoom, you could just have like interview somebody to talk about, um, to talk. So um, social me, distancing show. Let me just use uh, Trevor Noah as, as an example of this. Oh, it's my pleasure. Good to see you again. This Can you guys hear that? OK, I'm going to shut up. Our first time during the social distancing era. This is our first time. Hopefully, it'll be our last time. I don't, I don't like this. I like hearing your silky voice in person. I feel like there are a few parts sort of the frequency. The meat of the it, it's very different to feel the crowd and uh, there's, there's no experience that will duplicate that. Yeah, let's, let's talk a little bit about that, that um, you know, that place in the world, being not just an artist, but being a black artist, being a black artist who is also conscious. You know, before these protests began, John Legend had been on the ground. You've been fighting for, for, for changes in mass incarcer incarceration. You've been fighting to change how America treats black people. You've been fighting for equality and justice for a long time. Is this part of the movement you've been hoping to see for so long? Well, seeing the folks in the streets, seeing this multiracial, multi-generational, huge movement of people in the streets has been very uh, inspiring for me. It does make me hopeful about the future, but I also know that there's a lot of work that goes into actually making the change that we're speaking out for. And so um, all of the times in between these big protests, or when a lot of that work has to get done. Right. And so, um, and so um, activists, organizers, they're uh, seizing this momentum and saying, let's get in these city council meetings. Let's talk to our uh, Congress people. Let's organize, let's mobilize people to get out to vote for a particular. So that's one example of something that you could do. You could interview somebody that's involved um, in, in the Black Lives Matter movement or somebody that you would consider somebody worthy of interviewing, talking about uh, a variety of topics. So um, get moving on to, to that, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show just sort of like what is sort of a, a mashup piece um, that is, is, it looks like it's been completely filmed by phone. So I'm gonna show that as an example as just like a message piece. It could be me. It could be me. It could be me. 
It could be me. It could be me. It could be me. It could be me. It could be me. It could be me. 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 It could be me. Unless. 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 Unless we keep fighting. Unless we keep fighting. Unless we keep fighting. 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 Unless you keep fighting. Unless you keep fighting. Unless you keep fighting. Unless you keep fighting. You keep fighting. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. It could be me. It could be me. Dang, I got goosebumps. Anybody else? Yeah. That was filmed totally on people's phones. I'm certain of it, you know, and maybe on one person's computer. But it's impactful. Um, so here's another thing. So we, we can talk about different topics. So, um, you know, the, part of why we're putting this together is sort of like in this time where we can impact some change, we're hoping that people make videos about Black Lives Matter. It could be about George Floyd. It could be about racial inequity in general. It could be about Black excellence. Um, and we're trying to send these videos on to people that will listen to, uh, to help change the system and move this movement forward. We've also, um, we have a list of people that aren't listening, that aren't changing, that we'd like to send them on, mainly big corporations. Um, people that we want to listen, and this is a way that we can say something to them. So here's, um, here's an example of celebrating Black excellence. Are you guys seeing what I'm sharing? No, I was just about to say. No. So I'm no. sorry. I apologize. Um, hold on. Yeah, just interrupt me if I'm screwing up. It happens. Um, we see it now. OK. I'm Vice President of Education at Strathclyde Union. So what I do is um, represent students on academic issues um, that they would encounter within the university. So for me as a representative on the higher university bodies, I get to advocate for the black student voice because very often our voices are missing from these conversations. This year, example with Freshers Week, as more students came in and they saw, they saw somebody that looked like them, you could see that comfort and that smile on their face. And it can be a daunting challenge for everybody moving into a new environment to study and everything, but just making sure that people that stepping stone for people as they come into university knowing that you know they can easily achieve they can do what they, they want to do once they set their mind to it I'm... okay so that was just an example of you could do like a one person interview so set up zoom or just put your camera on somebody to just interview them it doesn't have to be a two-way interview like with trevor noah um and you basically, though, you need to make sure that you ask questions that are open ended so they don't just give you yes or no answers to things, something they can like talk about. Can you copy the link into the chat for that video? Yeah, I can. I'll tell you what. Um, hold on. Give me just a second. I will, um, for this one, I can plop that in. Thank you. Okay, and then there's there's another example that I have that I think is good. Um, sorry, my bar's in the way. Um, that I think is a good example of something that maybe you don't if you don't if you don't want to interview people, you just kind of want to document something and put it to music. That's another way. You know, you can tell 
film is all about telling stories through through pictures. So this is an example. There are interviews in it, but a, a big majority is basically just like B-roll put to music. So um, if you don't want if you don't want to be a host or a presence in the video, and you don't necessarily want to interview people or or can't contact somebody to interview, here's a way that you could put something together, just put to music, um, and and share it with people. So that's just a way that, you know, that there are interviews in there. But um, if you feel like you want to just kind of tell a story through pictures, that's, that's part of what film is about. You know, it's like a language of pictures. So if that's a way that you want to tell your story or tell somebody else's story, that's a good way to do it. Um, so th there's, those are just some ideas because I know people are like, well, what could I make? What could I do? I'm going to talk about how to like actually use equipment to do that. Um, and then um, Katnia is going to talk about how do I do that in a protest type situation or, you know, to keep myself and other people safe. And then Jessica Liu is going to talk a little bit about how do we do that respectfully. Any questions before we move forward? How about absolute silence? Does that sound good? Excellent. Just love it. Uh, <laughs> you may yeah. hear when I'm presenting, I just want to let folks know birds. Um, I have three birds and they like to talk a lot. Um, so we all have squawking creatures in our houses, basically. And, and Jessica Liu has a, a cat. Could anybody else, is anybody else willing to share what we might hear in the background at their house? Uh, you might hear uh, I'm currently playing Pokemon, so I, okay. Uh, <laughs> Sweet. Dave. Uh, I got Infinity War in the background. Okay. Is your is your kid there? Is she? No, they they actually went down to um, Wild Safari. Oh really? Yeah, That's they went down. Crazy. There. They're gonna awesome. be down in that area for like a couple of days. Awesome. I like the lemurs and the ostrich. Those are my favorite. Mm -hmm. Lorena, it sounds like you had something to say. Yes, you might see my granddaughter poke her head, you know, poke her head and come and check what I'm doing. Okay, she's going to emerge from the Voces de la Comunidad background. I love it. She Jasmine. Might. Yes. What might we hear in the background at your house? Um. Uh, I don't know. I got a big fan on, but I can't tell if it's like noticeable. I can, I can... slightly hear it. Okay. It's good. Um, yeah. My partner's actually on a Zoom call right now also, but they're like in the bathroom. Okay. So we're trying to like make it work. I, I think, totally understand. I think it's fine though. <sighs> yeah. Uh, Angela. Nothing. I'm alone right now. So oh, it's silent. All right, perfect silence. Jalen. silence. Um, probably a lot of doorbells because we have a lot of people coming. Okay. Yeah. All right. Shane. All right, I asked him to unmute. Here we go. Shane, what? Uh, okay, so you say my name. Okay, I wasn't sure if you did or not. Okay, um, so it's uh, what we might hear in the background, right? Uh, well, my dog, like if he responds to something, or you know, fans, because I don't handle the heat that well. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Everybody's got a squawking creature. Um, let's see here, Clementine. 
My cat might make an appearance with a few meows. Okay. And I have somebody that's on Galaxy S8 Plus. I'm not sure. Maybe Amada tried to get in. Amada. Okay, we'll wait. Um, and then Vo, what might we hear in your background? You you might hear me cursing because my internet connection is pretty bad where I'm located. I'm okay. in like a basement unit, so if you hear some random person just yelling, it's probably me. Okay. What about would Homer would would we hear Homer yelling too? Like Doe in I the background? Try to do it in the voice of a Simpsons character. I will try. Excellent. Yes. Okay. Okay. Ray, Ray Asha too. Yeah, I didn't hear Ray Asha or J. Lou. Oh, I got my cat. Cat. And she has Star Road in her background. Ray Asha, do you, or no, it's Rayani is with us, I think. Yeah, I got my cat. Awesome. Nice. Good to see you. Okay, um, let's keep moving. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how you could conduct an interview with somebody using Zoom. And then um, I have a question. Does anybody plan on using their phone to edit or record stuff? I think probably recording for me. Okay. Um, yeah. what, about, what about editing? Is anybody going to use their phone to edit? I've been messing around with some like filters lately uh okay. I'm kind of late to that <laughs> but what? um i have been curious about learning more about like how to do that on my phone because i mean i don't have you know like a whole range of technology really that i could use i'm like i know there's probably like tons of like free apps or something that i could do mm -hmm. um okay. just make videos on my phone what kind of phone do you have um, I have a, like a, it's like a Motorola G7 powers, some, something like that. Okay, cool. So I'm not going to cover everything because we do have to like make some movement, but I will refer you to some stuff that I think is useful. Um, so I'm going to start by just talking about using Zoom as I think it's a very good device if you're using a, a computer or even your phone to record with. Um, I'm going to do a screen share. And this is going to be very like meta because we're um, there's going to be multiple iterations of me. I think. Um, can everybody see the interface, the Zoom interface, like the stuff at the bottom here? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So um, I think if you are using a free version of Zoom, I think it's uh, you can have uh, two people in it. I, I want to say it's unlimited time or forty minutes. So. I think Zoom is a really good option for recording. It's probably going to record the best quality. Um, it will record whatever quality your camera has. So if you have a 720p camera, which most, most things are, then you'll be able to just use that and it'll be that quality, which is HD sort of. Uh, but it's good enough. I mean, if you look at what a lot of the late night talk show hosts are using, they're using Zoom or Skype or whatever, and people are watching it. So. Um, a few things, if you have some headset, if you have a headset like what, um, what Day has is perfect. Something that your microphone's close to your, your mouth, your bokeh, um, is something that's good to have. Um, and then um, you also want to kind of be cognizant of where you're located in the screen. So make sure that you do a little bit of positioning so you're not too far down or too far up. And make sure that the people on the other end that you might be interviewing hopefully they match those same requirements um, because you want the recording quality to, to be good, um, not just audio wise, but also in terms of what you're seeing. The other thing is if somebody's having, if they have really slow internet connection, you might get really delayed. Uh, your interview could be delayed a lot. So one option is if they have slow internet connection at home, it might make sense to interview them on their phone because they might actually have a faster inter internet connection over a cellular tower on their phone than they might on their computer using at-home Wi-Fi. 
Um, something else that you, you might want to uh, make sure happens is you want to make sure there's plenty of light on the person. So I would make sure that they're not sitting in front of a window. Uh, make sure that it's not like that classic bat backlit lit picture where some you see like behind them, there's a window and you can barely see their face. Just make sure to avoid those kind of things. And then I'm going to just give me a second here. I'm going to pull up a little, just some, some pictures of this stuff. I'm going to stop sharing. Okay, give me a second. I'm going to share my screen here again. So this is from our co-video contest. I'm just going to dive, just have a few little tips on this. Um, so bear with me. Again, try and, try and get somebody to be in a quiet place so you don't hear a bunch of background noise. I know that's not totally always possible, but see if you can get them away from stuff that might make noise. If you do have a plug-in microphone, have them where you wear it. Uh, make sure that you're being safe about how close you are to people, obviously with nowadays. Um, the video composition, if you're using your phone, that's one, your, that's one thing is you wanna just like, don't always bullseye every shot. Try and use the rule of thirds, which is basically you structure it so that when you take a shot of person, different elements of the picture are along the thirds line. So you have a horizontal third where the, the sun is here and this horizon, and then you have a person right here that's on that vertical third. Um, if you do have a tripod, obviously use it. If you're using your computer though, you basically just use your computer. It is a tripod, it's fixed. Um, one thing that's really critical, I'm gonna emphasize this again, shoot in widescreen. Um, Unless you're specifically trying to shoot something for Instagram, shoot widescreen because ultimately that's how our eyes see, and you're missing out on a lot of um, you're missing a lot of opportunity to get the full kind of scope of what you can see with your video. Um, otherwise, it ends up being that vertical thing with stuff on the side. Uh, it's like they have the the same picture or the same video in the background, but it's blurry. Um, don't don't zoom as don't use your phone to zoom because it's not really an optical zoom it's not using the lens to zoom it's just zooming closer in on the the video pixels and it just gets blurry again make sure you're in a space where the the exposure is good make sure there's plenty of light and you're not backlit so avoid having a backlit situation um so let's see here I'm going to stop sharing here. Um, when you're when you're using Zoom, I'm going to share my screen again here. Can you guys see that Zoom screen? No, I can't see. Can anybody else? Do you see my? But you see like the? Do you see me moving my mouse around, Day? Yeah, I can see. Yeah, I can see that. Okay, I think it's. Because it's showing the zoom window, it probably looks like nothing's going on. But mm. um, so basically, if you want to record, I actually have been recording. You want to press record here. There's two options for recording. One is to record to the cloud, and that's something you go and get the file in the cloud. And the other is to record to your desktop. I recommend you you record to your desktop because that's going to be the higher quality file. And in order to find that, there's a there's usually a file that's um, under documents and it's called zoom and you have to like rummage around in that file to go get that zoom file um, but you should be able to edit that in final cut or adobe premiere you just plop it into into something like that um, but I, I, I think zoom is is if you're going to do like an interview type show where you interview somebody you can also splice in b-roll that you shoot with your phone i think zoom is a good way to do it because then it's it's a it's basically like a live switcher um, and if you want to change the view so that there, I recommend um, if you're going to have like, 
more than one person in there and you want both of them showing, you can hit gallery view. Um, but if you want it to just switch between who's speaking and sort of auto switch, just put it on speaker view. Uh, and then also I recommend go into full screen mode because otherwise you're going to get um, other stuff on your screen that maybe you don't want. Are there any questions about using film, uh, Zoom to film or record? Or any questions about audio, lighting, anything like that? I have a question. If yeah. I'm doing an interview, I want to have uh, the, the other person next to me. Okay. Can you tell me how to do it? Yeah, so uh, Lorena, what I would do is when you record, when you press record, do gallery view. Click, click this thing in the top right hand corner that says gallery view. And then that should be, that should make sure that it's recording them. Okay. Let's say, let's say that you have somebody else that's running the show for you. Like we have a producer that runs our Zoom show and then we have our host interview people. Just have mm -hmm. them mute their camera and then you won't see them. Oh, okay. Yep. Can you so, show us where we would change uh, from reporting to cloud to reporting to computer? Yeah, unfortunately, I'm recording right now, but right here at the bottom here, see this uh, record, stop, pause, stop recording area? There's a record option and it will pop up automatically. It'll ask you record to the cloud or record to the computer. And I, I don't want to do that because I'll have to stop recording. Thanks. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk a little uh, bit. Jalen had a question about changing the view while recording. Yes. Ex uh, what do you got, Jalen? Let's see. I'm sorry, I don't have my uh, my chat up. Jalen. Um, can you change the view while recording? Ex uh, Jalen, tell me what you mean. Um, like if, if like you were in an interview and like, um, the producer wanted to go from gallery view to speaker view, um, like change the shot, like how would they do that? Um, they could do that live. They could go from gallery view to speaker view. Um, but I would say it'd be a little bit cumbersome. What I would consider doing is it takes a little bit more work, but um, you know, what you could do is record only speaker view. Uh, I, think, I think you just have to stay, I think you need to pick one. You need to just do one or the other. Um, you could potentially switch between them, but I think it would, you, you could do that, but I think it, it's, it could screw it up. Like, I feel like it, it's be a little bit prone to error. So I would, I would probably just pick one. Um, uh, I have a tip for if, if you have somebody who's sort of savvy who you're interviewing over Zoom, you can have them record themselves with either QuickTime or like a um, PC based recording software and then send you that file. If they pin their own video, then it'll just show them the whole time on yeah. their own recording and then you can edit it after the fact. Yeah. It's only if you're not live. Yep. And I suspect like Trevor Noah has this really fancy thing where he has like picture in picture. So like, I mean, fancy as far as fancy goes, but basically like you have your video and then you have the person's face here and in, in right here. And then sometimes he has that split screen down the middle. I don't think Zoom's going to give you that because it's just, it's not, doesn't have that degree of, of capabilities. So you just kind of, um, I, you know, either go with the gallery view or go with the speaker view. Okay, I do have a question. Um, how many people are on iPhones? I'm, I'm currently on an iPhone right now. Okay. So uh, give me a second. I'm going to jump into... I'm just going to talk really quickly. Like, again, make sure you shoot horizontally. Um, but I'm going to talk about setting your resolution so it's the sort of best resolution. Um, give me a second. So we'll stop screen sharing here. And while you're uh, getting that set up, something that um, came up on my mind that I was kind of thinking about is 
so like when documenting let's say for example a protest um i know that like a lot of the people you know wouldn't want their faces to be seen um and i'm wondering if there's like any tools or like kind of things like I, I know that when there's like live recordings on TV, sometimes there's like, I guess some kind of like weird editing thing where they could almost like detect the faces and cover it up. I don't know if that makes sense. But, yes. Yeah. Um, do you know of like that kind of thing that like someone could potentially do that with, with Zoom to help protect anonymity so that like hateful people like white supremacists, for example, wouldn't be able to identify protesters, like as an example. So like a, like yeah, a so, so Zoom, Zoom can't do it itself, nor can, you can't just like have it record and do that as it's live. However, Lily, are you still with us? Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about what you researched? On, for Final Cut Pro Blurry? Yeah. Yeah, so, Oh gosh, let me see if I can explain it well. Um, so basically you have your shot and then you copy it and you put it in the timeline on top of your shot and you can, you can do a thing to trim it. And uh, then you go to effects and you put a blur over one of them. Is that making sense? It's kind of yeah. hard to explain. So I can find a video and uh, put it in the chat box. That would be excellent. Um, what I would say is what, but in a nutshell, what, what Lily's talking about and what you see on TV, like on cops or whatever is they take, or they do it with branding because you're not supposed to have branding on, on television unless you have permission. So um, one of the things that they do is in, a, in an editing software like Adobe Premiere or Final Cut, there's a blur option that basically like you can have it Sometimes you can have it track faces if it's fancy enough, or you can just like, um, you have to insert it manually and it creates a blur on their face. So um, unfortunately, unless you have Final Cut or Adobe Premiere, which is actually the trials free right now, I, I haven't been able to do it. I don't know how to do it on a phone. Um, unfortunately, I think that's one of those things you have to have more higher end software to make that happen. Even in iMovie. Uh -huh. I think there are apps. Cool. There are apps, though. Okay. Um, so Signal is uh, has tools for Android and iOS. Okay. To, um, faces. I just put the link in the chat, and then Please. there's also some other blurring software. There's like ten of them, I think, on this um, tech uh, website by this article by Zach Whitaker, and it's about um, free tools where protesters' faces are removed. That photo metadata. All right. And you dumped it into the, thank you for sharing that link. No problem. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, let's see here. Uh, so I was going to talk a little bit about, um, and also Lorena, you just told me that Amada can't get into the Zoom. He is checking her out, but she cannot see us. I don't know if you need to open up. I don't know, but she can hear everything, but... Is not able to see us. Huh. Bizarre. I don't understand. I'm not sure what. She's in the Zoom app. Is she on a computer? I think she's on. Yeah, I think she's on a computer. I just. Is it possible maybe she's not in the Zoom tab or something like that? It's weird that she can't see it. I don't. Okay. Seth, anyway. you're still sharing your screen too. Okay. So I'm going to move forward and talk a little bit about using your, your iPhone or tab. In this case, I'm using an iPad, but give me a second here. Um, one of the things, if you want to have better settings available, um, let me see if I can find my settings here. Oh, here they are. So under settings, if you go to, let's see if I can find my camera. <clears throat> Here we go, camera. You have an option. Uh, you guys can see that that says like 4K. Um, it's it's uh, on the right side of the screen under those green toggle buttons. There's a record video option at 4K at 30 FPS. I recommend, you know, depending on what quality you want, obviously 1080 is fine. But if you want to shoot a little bit better quality, then that 4K is um, 
is good stuff. Um, and that's sort of what I try and shoot most of my things in because then that makes it a little more future proof. And then in terms of editing, I'm not going to show how to use iMovie to edit, but we can send out links for some instructionals on that. We also have a full class where we kind of do, do that. Um, but I'm going to open up iMovie. iMovie is like five bucks and you can edit almost anything you want on there. It's very accessible. Um, I just have some footage of me mowing my lawn and an old, old snowman with some filters on it. But it's really accessible uh, non-linear linear editing software and you can cut plenty of stuff together on it. It's got a space for like audio, an audio track, like a music track. And also if you wanna put dialogue or that sort of thing. So um, I recommend if you're, using, if you're using an iPhone, use iMovie to edit with and then just make sure that you dial in your audio settings well or sorry, your recording settings. So any questions? Um, Android users, uh, what I would recommend, give me just a second, I'm gonna jump into Zoom on Android. I'm gonna stop broadcasting and leave, goodbye. Okay, so Zoom. Give me a second, I need to plug in my, um, plug in the link. J. Lou, now would be a good time to play music or if people wanna stop and discuss really quick, um, that would be a good idea too. Does anybody have any, like a, an idea maybe forming in their heads about what kind of video they make, might wanna make? Not quite. Um, I just know that I really want to get things going. Um, like I've done various forms of like activism and for like various causes. And um, like I, I, I want to try new ways of trying to get my messages out there. Um, even if it's things that I haven't experienced myself. Um, you know, or maybe being able to document people um, maybe who have dealt with things and um, are willing to be able to um, share their time and be able to um, say their experiences and document, you know, what's going on and the lived, the lived experiences of people. Um, I know I, I've been a lot of um, writing mostly lately. Um, but I think that, of course, like, you know, a variety of types of media uh, the best because I know that, you know, different people prefer to get their information in different ways. So I'm always down to hear, uh, you know, different things that I can do to help spread awareness of different things. Thanks for I'm sharing. I'm gonna share something in the chat as well. Um, there's a great opportunity for black creatives and filmmakers through a new fund that's been started by Open Signal. And so I'm gonna pop that information in the chat um, so folks can check that out too. That's that money. And you know, that's the squeebler. Um, so I'm sharing my screen, this is an Android phone. Um, if you're trying to adjust your film settings on an Android phone, you swipe down and get into your, the guts of things. Um, let's see here. Oh, you know what, it, that's not right. Um, I'm gonna leave this. You go into your camera app and um, if you go under more, I think it's video and then there's a settings option I have mine set to 4K ultra high resolution. So if you wanna adjust your settings there, um, you can do that. Um, and then um, in terms of an editing software, I use something called Android Power Director, which is really similar to iMovie. I'm not gonna go into it, but if you need a recommendation. I think it's um, pretty good, sorry. Here we go. We did our COVID-19 stuff, um, but it's, I think it's 
I think it's free to use, but they make a watermark on it. So you do have to pay for it. But I think it's, it's as powerful as iMovie. So I think that's pretty good software if you're trying to use, um, if you're trying to edit on your phone uh, in Android. So um, if you do have an Android phone, it's not a bad option. I'm trying to think of Shane, if, if you wanted to edit something together, this is a way that you could do it on your phone. Yeah, I have a um, Android system for, um, I, I think, that, and yeah, that's what my Motorola thing runs on. Okay. And it looks like um, Amada had a, I believe she had a Samsung Galaxy something, uh, S8 Plus. Again, if you want to film with your phone and edit with your phone, I recommend PowerDirector. But there's a million different apps out there for editing. They're all very similar. Um, and it's all about like, you know, you drag a video to your timeline, you cut it up, you add audio, you add music, that kind of thing. Um, okay. Seth, can you do instructions in Spanish too? Uh, uh, sí. Uh, para Amada? Sí. Okay. Amada, ¿estás escuchando? Creo que... Tu, uh, tu micrófono está... Sí, okay. les escucho. Lo que no los puedo es ver. Ok, entiendo. Hola, soy Amada. Ok. <risa> los Gracias escucho, pero no los puedo ver. Ok. Eh, yo no sé por qué. ¿Estás en, en una computadora? Estoy presente. ¿O, o está en un, en un teléfono? No, estoy desde el celular. Desde sí. el celular. Ok, está bien. Mira, está en el, en el app de Zoom. Oh, salió. Ok, ahí está. Te veo. Hmm. ¿Es posible que su video, eh, eh, su conexión es demasiado lento o algo así? No estoy seguro. No, no está muy buena la conexión. Se me, se me reconecta cada rato. Disculpen. Ok, no hay problema. Um, pero si no, no se ve, solo quisiera averiguar que estaba en el app. Zoom. Ok. Uh, tal vez, Lorena, lo... ¿Hacemos algo separado con ella? Sí, pero puede escuchar ella, puede escuchar y después podemos hablar de más. Ok, está bien. Ok, so that's sort of... Um, the general filming advice that I would say is use Zoom or your phone to film. Um, if you can, if you have access to Final Cut or Adobe Premiere, I think you know you can use the the free trial version of it. Um, there's other sort of online resources like Wee Video that you can use to cut things together. Um, but and the other thing is, if you're a Metro East member, we're actually um, July 9th. I know that's past the screening date, but we will have. Um, gear available to check out. Uh, we're reopening on July, July 9th if you need to check something out to edit with. So I'm going to stop talking. Cat meow. I'm going to pass the baton to you in Pee Wee's Playhouse. You are muted. Here we go. Okay. Yeah. Welcome to Pee Wee's Playhouse. I'm your host, Kent Meow. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about documenting demonstrations and events. Um, so first, there's a big old question that everyone wrestles with, which is, should I bring my phone? Should I not bring my phone? Um, so some folks have experienced being tracked by their phone because all phones have, all cell phones rather, have GPS tracking units in them. So it is a quandary to put folks in because we do want to consider how lightweight our gear is and phones are pretty darn lightweight. Um, so it's kind of up to you as a documentarian what you want to bring um, to a demonstration or an event. Um, if you do bring your phone, there are really cool ways to um, change your VPN or your um, what your phone's being recognized as. Um, there's also the Signal app, which I posted a little, a little um, 
link to it earlier in the chat, um, which allows you to blur people's faces, I believe, in real time, which is nice for if you're live streaming, because a lot of folks have been taken with live streaming lately. Um, and there's a few other apps that I also posted in the chat a little bit earlier um, that are available for Android and iOS phones. Um, another thing to remember to bring, um, it's not necessarily bail funds, but I wanna talk about bail funds. Those are available. Um, media have been being attacked by uh, police or taken into custody, detained, whatever you wanna call it, um, quite a bit recently. So it is a good idea to have something set up it, um, in your mind about what you would do if you were to be um, detained by a police officer um, or a peace officer. Um, so there are bail funds, which uh, we'll send links to y'all and I can put them in the chat as well, available um, through two different organizations in Portland. There is the uh, Portland Freedom Fund. You can find them on Facebook. Um, you can also donate to them or share it with folks. Um, they're being um, supported by NAMI, which is a board of director, uh, I used to serve on the board of directors for, it's the Northwest Alliance for Alternative Media and Education. Um, they're a great organization. So they have a bail fund. And then our, um, our Portland uh, PDX protest bail fund is available as well. And that's through the General Defense Committee, local one here in Portland. So they have a phone number, it is 503-442-0866. And what I do when I go out in the field is I just write that on my arm in Sharpie. I'm gonna put that phone number here in the chat. Um, and again, that's from the General Defense Committee, local uh, one here in Portland. Oregon and they will help you through the process. They advocate that you do not talk to the police, especially without legal representation or support. So you do not have to share your pictures or protesters or any identifying information of those folks, um, including visible faces. And you can just um, take that number and call that if you're allowed to make a call while you're being detained. Um, okay, so another uh, thing I want to go over are filming tips. Um, particularly portability. So everything gets heavy after a while. I know I've been carrying around a C100 and that sucker, after you're holding it above your head, gets real, real heavy. So just uh, either work up, work up to that kind of thing or think about that as you're, as you're packing because no matter how light it seems um, before you head out, it's gonna get heavier the longer you're out. And some of these marches, you know, if you're starting at six and staying out until like 1.30 or two, that's a long time to be carrying gear around. Another idea is to bring a good set of headphones. Oftentimes when we're documenting, we're a, we're a one person band. And so we're doing audio and we're doing visual. So a good set of headphones goes a long way. It's terrible to get home and look at your footage and go, oh my gosh, there's no audio. It's really, really, audio is the key to what keeps your audience involved and engaged. Um, so then the other thing is just be mindful about how much space you and your gear take up. I usually bring um, a, a side sack that I, I can't remember what they're called actually, but the kind that go over one arm and hang down the side. I've seen folks with backpacks on, but bigger backpacks tend to like hit other folks. And so that can be an issue. So just be, a, be aware of yourself and be aware of folks who are using mobility devices um, because uh, I know when we get into our craft, when we get into our filming, you can start to just go into the footage and not re realize anyone that's around you. Um, so try to be mindful of that, especially in populated areas that are really highly populated. Um, you can bring bright lights, although in my experience, um, they've caused participants of the protest distress, and it's not usually advisable. Um, lighting gear can also make you a target. Uh, it gives uh, police and uh, militarized police especially something to shoot at, and it's, there's a long history of um, projectiles hitting media. So um, I don't advise bringing lights unless this is some sort of other thing where you're off to the side interviewing someone and, the, and it's you know, a really, really safe location. Um, definitely bring an extra set of batteries. I cannot tell you how many times I've been watching someone live stream and they have to stop at the most like crucial time because, oh, their battery's going dead. So bring uh, extra batteries or additional chargers if that's available to you um, because you might not have access to a ch uh, charging station or a power station and bring, bring water and snacks. Um, oftentimes, especially right now, there's tons of snacks and water available, but we are still in COVID situation. Um, so it's a good idea if you can supply your own to do that. Um, there's a lot of folks reaching out who can't make to the protest due to their um, 
their health concerns or other reasons, um, mobility reasons. And a lot of those folks are putting together snack packs for people. And um, there's all kinds of people who can give you that support if you need um, support in that way. Uh, the other thing is if you're filming outdoors, bring sunscreen or other protections from the environment if you need that sort of thing. Rain gear um, in a pinch, you can just uh, rain gear. It's, there's an old style punk way of doing rain gear and that's um, just some uh, black garbage bags and some rubber bands and there you go you're you're geared up um, also you want to make sure you bring a mask because of COVID it's still very real and bring a backup one just in case in case you get jostled uh, the other thing is you want to bring a change of clothes a lightweight as possible um, just in case you are doused in mace or pepper spray or tear gas um, I know that there was some like sayings that oh they're not going to tear gas people or use that stuff but they have been continually using it so um, just it's a good idea to bring a little extra clothes. Um, so there's some safety gear that you can get and I do want to share my screen but before I talk about that I want to talk about people as a resource. You know um, it's a really good idea to bring a buddy. Um, your buddy can keep you aware of curbs, poles, other obstacles. They can keep you aware of other people, of uh, where the medics are, uh, the movement of militarized per police, um, projectiles. Um, so it's a really good idea to bring a buddy. I had a really terrible experience that got me this uh, eye situation happening because it was the night that I did not bring a buddy. Um, so that's a really good idea to bring a buddy. Um, and also you can, like I said, there's lots of people who are trying to help who can't come down to these demonstrations um, and they're willing to be point people. So a point person, they have your full name, your date of birth, um, the time you're expected back from documenting, they um, will check in with you. They have your emergency contact information. They have the lawyer number that you'll be calling um, that I gave you from the General Defense Committee and they will call and check to see if you have been detained or not um, for you. And they're kind of just like a backup. They also provide a ride to and from um, any event that you may be at. Um, so that they're a really good person to, it's a really good idea to have a point person, not necessarily someone who's down there with you, but someone who knows you're going, who you trust, who you can contact and get back in um, touch with. Okay, so I'm going to show you my screen now. Do, 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 do. That is a good um, point, though, about how like a lot of people can't really make it um, due to like mobility issues um like my mobility is ever changing and so you know one day i can walk one day i can't put any weight at all on and so um i used to do a lot more in-person stuff and so i've been more limited and but the whole like buddying up thing um a concern that i've actually had is i've been trying i don't really know what to do as far as like finding someone that will go with me somewhere and be willing to be patient like be like okay i'm using my power chair and you know the whole thing like but like curbs so like you know needing to get out of a situation really quick when i was walking everywhere out and about you know i could just step to the side um, using my power chair, I know that that's definitely not always feasible. Um, and, you know, just kind of, you know, not always having a way out. Mm -hmm. Um, and so since I don't want to, like, step away from the topics too much or anything, um, I just, I'll just say that, like, I, that's something that I'm open to discussing with someone after, or, um, if you want to get in contact with me about, like, possible ways, you know, talking about solutions to those types of things, and I'd be open to that type of uh, discussion um, as someone that is disabled and does want to be, like, out there actually, like, doing stuff. So, so, that, so thanks for um, mentioning that, though, because I feel like not enough people really acknowledge that there's people, like, that have mobility devices and their effect, um, actions and everything. Well, I've definitely noticed quite a few of uh, our community members who use mobility devices at these events, and um, and it's important that we're aware, even at not in events, just in life in general. Um, these are our community members. This is these are our people who are helping us document, who are helping us with their bodies being there, and it's it's really important that we respect and and hold space for that because we're all it takes all of us. So thank you for bringing that up, and I'd love to talk with you more about th that particular matter, Shane. Maybe we can have a class on that. Uh, can everyone see the Hong Kong protest gear from the summer of 2019? So, um, as a re 
as a recorder, um, I don't recommend all of these things, um, it's, uh, but I definitely recommend a helmet. I got myself a helmet the other day um, because unfortunately, like I said, there is history of the police attacking media. Um, uh, goggles uh, can be a hindrance when you're trying to look at a screen or look through a lens, um, but I do definitely recommend a face cover just because it is COVID times. Um, and the, the little gas mask you see him wearing, or him or her, they, you see this person wearing, um, that it, you can get those at all kinds of like hardware stores and what have you a lot of painters use those people who do drywall so they're they're very very common and it really helps um separate some cleaner air out for you if the if tear gas is being used so you're, it's not um, hindering your ability to document uh, i definitely highly recommend elbow pads and knee pads in case you fall um, and some cash cash is great you never know if you're going to lose your water or something you need to just pop into the, the sev to get something um, the heat resistant gloves are good if you're not filming so maybe your buddy can wear those because the camera <laughs> and the of the the tear gas the pepper spray bullets and the um the what are those last grenades? They're very, very, very hot, and if you touch them, you will burn yourself. Um, I know because I did it. Ow, it hurts. Um, so uh, somebody with you should have some um, heat-resistant gloves. I just wanted to share this cool infographic, and let's see what else are we looking at? Buddy resources. Do 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 do. Okay, so I'm going to go on to live coverage of events. Um, so I did look up on the ACLU website. Can y'all see that? Yes, yes. Um, if you want to take pictures, look at, or I don't really like the word shoot video. I like documenting, but um, getting footage at a protest. So these are your basic rights. Um, you have the right to photograph anything, including federal buildings and the police. Um, so there's a different set of rules on video because audio from video can be um, negated in court cases uh, due to wiretapping laws. So um, your, your audio may not always be available through like litigation processes, but it's really great to capture audio. Uh, so police officers are not allowed to confiscate or demand to uh, view your photographs or video without a warrant. Although I've been multiple times told that they can um, because unfortunately our police officers are allowed to lie. Um, so they can order that you stop um, your activities if they're interfering with legitimate law enforcement operations. Unfortunately, the, the folks that identify what is legitimate is them. So at times it can be very disheartening if you are witnessing police brutality or mis, uh, misconduct. If they say it's not and it's their regular duty and say that you're inhibiting them, then it, it's, on, it's on them to determine what that is. So that's really, really frustrating as somebody who's trying to document that stuff. Um, I can say you can move back as far as you can. If you do have a zoom function um, on an actual camera camera that's zooming in and out, um, please you know, think about using that. Another way to get around that is if you can get up high, like say in parking garages, um, you can then film from above and then you will be out of harm's way. I found that to be a really, really great um, tool. I also, there's a really cool dude, a uh, veteran for peace, Eric Greatwood, Great, Greatwood. And what he's done is he's attached a GoPro to a 20 foot pole and he just <laughs> goes around with that GoPro and he actually gets really nice footage that people think are, is drone footage. So that's another way to stay safer and still get um, angles from um, above that allow you to see everything that's happening. So if you are stopped or detained for taking photographs, you can just stay calm, don't physically resist because even just like putting your hand up or tapping, I know someone who was literally arrested for tapping an officer on the shoulder and asking them not to hurt someone. So there's that. Um, so just don't touch them at all. Um, don't resist. Uh, they can't detain you without reasonable suspicion. Um, that you're about to commit a crime or in the process. That is really hard and difficult in these situations because a lot of times they'll call like, this is an unlawful blah, 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 do, 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 blah, blah, dirt. Um, so you can just say, hey, am I under arrest or am I free to go? If they say yes, then just walk away to the free to go part. Um, if you are detained, you can ask the officer what crime you're being suspected of committing and then remind the officer that taking photographs is under your First Amendment rights. Although I um, <clears throat> would advise not to talk to them at all um, and call and demand to be able to call your lawyer. Okay, um, there's some more information about what to do if your rights have been violated. However, as we're all learning or have already been aware of for many, many years, um, there is systemic prejudice and racism in all of these systems. And so this is not going to necessarily you justice, sadly, although they're established, the policies don't work if people aren't following them. Okay, what else? 
do to do buddy system. Uh, we'll send you some more info on documenting demonstrations and events. Um, there's a great a great deal of um, links that we're going to be sending you after this. I did want to talk a little bit more about live streaming. Um, so it can put participants at risk for detention, harassment, stalking, and trolling, um, not just by uh, agents of the state, but also by like the alt right folks who are, have been um, attending these uh, demonstrations in mass. Um, so you definitely want to try to use Final Cut or use a sensor filter if you're editing after the fact or record and edit software or record live events with that Signal app or other apps that are allowing you to um, blur faces in real time. Um, so when you're interviewing, um, try to research who you're interviewing beforehand. That's a really good um, step to take, especially if you're talking with folks who are taking all this time and emotional energy to um, to start and lead these organizations. You don't want to just come um, with nothing in mind when you're speaking with them. It's super disrespectful. Um, so um, research the folks who are leading these movements beforehand, and that will enable you to form questions that are really respectful, and it may help with other parts of the interviewing process. You also want to use your active listening skills, of course. And so um, you want to think about um, how the way you're filming is going to be interpreted by the by the folks that are watching what you film. So um, this just talk, speaking to when you're doing an extreme close up of someone who may be um, having their feelings out in the open because at a lot of the rallies and demonstrations, people are sharing really deeply touched raw parts of themselves and the emotion that you can see in people's eyes is very, um, it's, it's striking and, and it's and it's like you cannot deny, you know, when you see that. But these are people and this is their lived experience. So it's very, very important that you, you ask permission. I mean, you don't have to, but it's very ethical to ask permission if somebody's pouring their heart out and you're getting this on, on film after the fact, you know, say, hey, I got this, you know, while you were telling this impactful story, can I use this? Um, it's just a really ethical approach. It's not necessary, but it's ethical. Um, so wide shots are um, something that a lot of people forget to, to get. Um, that's just going to be helpful if you're showing your audience where you're at. So anything that's iconic, very Portland, do to do, letting people know like this is where this is at. Because um, thankfully these demonstrations are happening everywhere. So it's good to tie it back to the actual location by having some Portland-esque thing or wherever you happen to be filming um, in a wide a wide shot so that uh, it's kind of like your establishing shot. Um, and keep asking yourself whose voice is getting heard, whose voice is not getting heard, who's being shown, who's not being shown, and why. Ask yourself those things. Keep yourself in check. Um, okay, and um, with that, um, speaking about voices and who's getting shown and not shown, I was going to lead it, shoot it over to um, Jessica, unless anyone has any other questions for me. Could we, um, could we ask just real quick, um, so we can get a little engagement, has mm -hmm. anybody been at any protests or rallies in this group? I've been no. to quite a few. Can you guys yeah, talk? Not, to... oh, go ahead. Um, unfortunately, not any in the past like couple of months. Um, like I've been really wanting to get involved with a lot of like the Gresham ones that have been going on. Um, and check those out because I mean and that's, that's where I'm from and so um but I like I was involved a lot you know in like a, other protests like there's a called Seattle or you know um back when you know like Abolish Ice was more like present of a cause um and so uh yeah I just and I'm I'm so glad that it, um, people are starting to take a stand for things, um, you know, like all around. So um, it's, it's like I've been waiting, like, I, like everybody has just been waiting um, for just like way too long for people just to finally be all like, yeah, um, you know, there's, it, it's been enough. Um, and even though I do, um, like belong to a lot of marginalized communities um i know like so like i'm not black and so i feel like it's more of my responsibility um right now to be speaking up um than like putting it all on someone that um has the life like that their life experiences are what is being um 
put um, constantly, you know, out there and, you know, all the emotions and um, like with things I've gone through when I've, when there's been media attention about people going through similar things, I know that it's a lot of emotional, like it, it's hard, you know, like dealing with it. So um, I know that it's, uh, even though I'm not exactly white, um, I'm a non-black person of color, and so I think yeah, it definitely is um, partially my job to really speak up and say something because um, you know it's, the focus really is you know it's like yeah, Black Lives Matter, and um, people with that experience shouldn't have to fight just to be treat, treated human all by themselves. Thanks. Um, who, who else has, um, has been at, at, um, any of these protests or rallies and could you just maybe share a little bit of your experience? Jay, you said you, you chimed in there. Um, I, I went to the protests, uh, around the, uh, second night, um, down near the justice center. And it was, um, uh, I, I wouldn't say that it, it wasn't like very peaceful, but at the same time, it was like a half and half. There was a lot of violent people and a lot of people who were trying to um, provoke the uh, Portland Public Police. Um, you, uh, I, I don't exactly know how to, you know, stress staying safe in a, environment like that but that's that's definitely uh one of the things that i was not prepared for and it advised um people to think about their safety when going down there okay. yeah kind of uh going off on that i think paul actually had something to say uh but i wanted to finish one quick thought uh, like Jay was saying about safety, uh, if anybody is thinking about, or if you know folks who are thinking about going to demonstrations, I highly, highly recommend people taking Know Your Rights training uh, because they'll go through and they'll give you all the resources that you need, all the numbers that you need to call and um, get your things lined up if something were to happen. Um, and then I'm gonna pass it over to Paul because I see his raised hand. Hello, can you see me or hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. <laughs> New see to you. the zone. Yes, um, I've taken the last two weeks off from the protests lately because of work and uh, my face has just been, it was burning so much through the tear gas and um, flashbangs. So that was a, a big experience um, for me. Never had to deal with that even though we protest a lot in Indiana. <laughs> so, um, I mean, it's a big experience, a big change about like what's a lot going on, but I feel like um, we're finally starting to get some feedback for the community, you know, starting to get some results. So it's a start. I don't know how long it's gonna continue to go, but I've been thinking about doc documenting now that I've not been down there as much safer places <laughs> stay off the front line if you have been out there because it's like really bad mainly. i would also recommend to if y'all have like if you're trying to go to document and you want to do it long term you want to like same thing as like go with a buddy uh when i was back in occupy when i was doing yeah, more demonstration huh I said never go alone. There's never been go alone. cases just this week of females going missing in downtown Portland alone. Yeah, they Whoa. like look for people leaving and going to protests by themselves to like yeah, pick them up. It's getting scary. Um, but consider uh, along with Know Your Rights training, they also have, um, I think it's Rose, Rose City Medics or Rose Hip Medics. Um, they also do um, like specifically how to train you to be a medic during demonstrations. So it's always good to like, have a medic in your crew, um, just in case. Although it, the medics have also been being targeted by police. 
not to negate what you just, it is good to have another. Um, I have to interrupt just for a moment here. I just want to make sure that, um, Paul, are you okay? I, I sent you this as a message. Are you okay? We're recording this for playback on our channels and YouTube and uh, social media. Are you okay if we do that? Also, I'm trying to model respectful asking for permission for filming. Right. No, yeah, that's fine. That's perfect with me. Okay. Sweet. Thanks, man. Yes, sir. Cool. Uh, does anybody else want to talk a little bit about any of the demonstrations they've been to? I've also been to like super fun ones, you know, like very, I mean, what I really kind of liked uh, and like a difference that I've seen um, is that like, I think with Black Lives Matter, there's a lot, I've seen a lot of like neighborhood organized things. Like, I don't know, it was like over the weekend, I just saw like a, a, a group of families down on 82nd and Gleason, you know, and I'm sure that, you know, like that wasn't posted anywhere, but they ended up attracting like a pretty large crowd of like 50 people and they had speakers and it was just like really cool to see these kind of like smaller um, community and neighborhood um, demonstrations popping up. Um, and it is kind of nice because then it's like there is a place for everybody you know it's like you don't have to be hitting the red zones all the time <laughs> yeah I, I totally agree with that there's a in Woodstock there's like a corner that they're just like nobody's organizing it they're just showing up at uh on Fridays and Sundays and I was able to like kind of cheer them on and stuff it was pretty cool I know here in southeast Portland where I'm at um there's a small park in our neighborhood that every day there's a small gathering from folks in the neighborhood who can't make it downtown or don't want to participate in that way. So they have a meeting here. And also the rallies that happen at Revolution Hall, there have been amazing speakers. I mean, Donna, um, Donna Hayes has been there talking about her struggle losing her loved one. Uh, there have been lots of youth um, speaking. There's been um, poetry readings. There's been performances of musical performances um, and all very impactful and um, not being for some reason um, tackled by SWAT team members, so. Cool, um, I wanna move on to a couple of resources um, that I think will be helpful. And these are mostly resources that are kind of directed at uh, uh, non-black people. Uh, so that includes non-black people of color and white folks. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, um, so are y'all seeing, do you see what I see? <laughs> are you seeing the uh, Justice in June website? Yes. Okay, cool. So I found this uh, website super helpful. Uh, it was put together, it's essentially like a compilation of uh, resources that uh, white and non-black people of color can use. Uh, and what I really like is they've kind of like broken down all these resources into like uh, bite size, quote unquote, bite size pieces. Um, because if you're interested in, if you're like just kind of starting to engage with uh, deeper anti racist work or, uh, you know, anti black work, then um, it's, you have to kind of like train your brain to like look through these lenses. Um, and it's going to be super tiring because you're going to get super upset and really frustrated about all of these things that you're going to learn. So remember to kind of like pace yourselves. Um, and that's the only way we're gonna be able to like maintain momentum uh, with other communities so that it's not all on the black community to like push these things forward. Um, so I really like this website because it breaks things down into 10, 25 and 45 minutes a day. Uh, and then even has like these handy little exercises that you can do. So Monday, you can do for 10 minutes, read this article. Tuesday and Wednesday, you can read the second and third reading of um, this article. So they kind of assign work for like the entire month. Uh, and then once you do that month, you can kind of decide uh, if you want to continue and do 25 minutes or 45 minutes. And there's also links here for other things like this anti-racism resources has a ton of stuff. It has things available for, for teachers and parents and also has tons of resources for, you know, like not everybody's into reading and not, that's not the best way for everybody to retain information. So in that, this link here, anti-racism resources also has a lot of um, links to podcasts and documentaries that are available on Netflix or you can probably just find on YouTube. Um, so that's one uh, website and I find it pretty helpful. Um, this is another one. Uh, this is like kind of digging a little deeper. It's this like a collective and it's like a live document. So it's still being worked on, but it's essentially just kind of like 
a, a dismantling or, or like kind of peeling back white identity scaffold. Um, so there's like these kind of uh, questions that you can kind of ask yourself. So you're like, oh, do I actually think this in my head? And if I do, here are some activities and things I can read to kind of like educate myself to like shift that frame of mind. Um, and, and there's like different degrees of that. Um, so this is really great for, uh, I mean, like, you know, I feel like myself, I'm like, whatever, pretty progressive liberal person. And I understand, you know, the struggles of communities. But even this, like, you know, I find it very helpful um, being a East Asian, <laughs> uh, you know, person of color. <laughs> uh, still very helpful for me. And then last, kind, last but not least, uh, this is very helpful. It's the National Museum of African American History and Culture. Uh, it's a website on the Smithsonian and they have tons of like portals here that you can kind of, it's like this little test that you can take and you like answer these questions and it kind of helps you like reveal some of your implicit biases. Um, and it was like really telling for me also. Um, so uh, those are just a few resources. Um, if y'all, you know, if you folks know of other people who would benefit from this, I would also like recommend you like get it out to people. Um, I initially thought this class would have more white people in it, so <laughs> I didn't think there would be so many um, POC here. But I, did, I we did we there are there are and we did try and recruit for that. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to get the we're trying to get the rainbow up in here yeah because yeah, we're, try, we're trying to, to me this is helpful to me so thank you yeah no problem trying to get the information out to the people who need it <laughs> is there any way you can copy that link and put it in the chat it's a long one but that's that yes you have to memorize it though i'm trying right now but man my brain is mushy and, <laughs> a we'll, long also, <laughs> we'll also send all this stuff out to uh uh, in, in a follow-up email. Awesome, thanks. Yeah, no problem. And then, boop. So I just posted all the links into the chat, and again, we'll send this all out. Uh, and I posted a I posted um, a phone number for Pacific Northwest Dental Care, who they are a uh, BIPOC run uh, dental facility and they're offering free emergency care for any folks who suffered, I put Fox, but I meant folks, who are suffering dental trauma from peacefully protesting. That's awesome. I actually need some dental work, so maybe I'll hit them. <laughs> Just for normals. Okay. Um, I'm finished with my section. <laughs> okay. Um, so now that we've talked a little bit, I can if people have stuff in mind that they want to do i know i was wondering i'm just going to call on a couple people so i don't know is day is day still here jay you're here yeah i'm still uh, here oh sweet sorry i couldn't see on the screen day and jay do you want to talk a little bit about i guess day you we had a little conversation on the phone about possibilities um what do you uh what do you mean like music video Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so I had went down to a couple of the protests, and I had took the camera with me, and I got a bunch of stuff. I was thinking of using Jay's song. That, um, he really, I really like it, honestly. I also was thinking about just kind of going out. I, I'm still working on it. It's not done yet, but I, we do have to make, finish mixing up the song and stuff too. Okay. And rough drafts are totally fine too. That's the thing. This doesn't have to be perfect. So yeah. the the goal is we're gonna we're gonna film things and then bring it back on Wednesday the eighth to just share what what we've come up with. And what I'll have is everybody on this list that attended, and the, uh, some people might already have stuff, so they may not be attending this. Um, but they might. There, there's for instance, Anthony Mosley is one of our interns that probably will have something for the showing. So we screen a little portion of it, like one to two minutes, we talk about it, and then we'll, we'll show somebody else's thing. And then ultimately, we wanna pass these on to people of influence. And also, you know, in both ways, people that are gonna listen and, and just automatically wanna change, but also people that may need a little more convincing, um, like companies, so. 
Yeah, and I've put together um, a contact information sheet with government, um, state government officials, Multnomah County officials, and also corporations who are down and corporations who are saying they are down, but aren't actually. Um, posers, they're called posers. <laughs> and so these are, these are, it's a great list of folks um, to be able to send your footage to once you're done and I, we can share that out as well. Anybody else, anything else they'd like to share? Lorena, I can't remember, did you have um, a, a Voces de la Comunidad that you were gonna share or I, I can't remember? I have been working on different interviews from people from different places just to talk about in their countries how they have been react or what they heard or what is their input on this um, movement in the United States. Great. I think that's really good to get a national perspective. Y um, Amada, lo que decimos que Lorena eh, está haciendo entrevista con gente pues, de otros países uh, y lo que está pasando en, en su propio país. Entonces, uh, si, si le interesa hacer algo así, un proyecto así o trabajar con Lorena sería muy bueno. I think you un... Is she, is she, is she listening to us? I think so, she unmuted. Ah, oh, okay. Está escuchando, creo que sí. Eh, pero ahora está en, en mudo. Okay. Anybody else, any ideas, any questions? Um, I don't have any like questions, but I did wanna say I am in the downtown area. So if anybody is out here like protesting, marching, and they need a place to just kind of regroup, I am more than able to like welcome people into my space. So I'm just gonna drop my email and then maybe we can just like exchange numbers if you feel like that's something you wanna do. Cool. Thanks for offering, Jasmine. That's an incredible help. And I forgot to mention, if you have friends downtown, that's a real, it's a really good time to hit them up for that um, favor they owe you. And I wanna say something for people maybe not going to protest or might not doing anything like me. I never, I haven't been able to go because that COVID-19, I don't wanna be out. But I think it's other ways we can do to help and support and maybe Bags, bags with the snacks and water and drop it in places with a sign and say this is for protesters they need it. Yes, this maybe is we're able to go, but probably a way to support people who's there. Thank yeah, you that, for that. Yeah, that's uh, that's a great point, Lorena. Yeah, um, a couple of the demonstrations I'd been to, you know, after you're standing out there all freaking day either in the sun or in the rain and you're like I'm super hungry <laughs> you're then very very grateful for those little snack packs and to those people who packed it 